Fellas, AC here. Welcome to another review. Today it's a Tom Ford and it's a Tom Ford that has really won my heart. You know, when I first tried it, I tried it in summer uh, last year <coughs> and excuse me, uh, it didn't resonate with me. But now it's peak of winter. It's really cold and I'm trying this fragrance and I'm absolutely smitten by it. I love it. This is a fantastic leather fragrance from Tom Ford and this is a Tom Ford signature line fragrance which is more of a designer uh, price range. <coughs> Excuse me. So Tom Ford Ombre Leather is a 2018 release. It, there's a Tom Ford six, uh, Ombre Leather 16 which, came, which is a private blend uh, that came out in 2016 and this is a Tom Ford strategy I believe. They release a private blend of a fragrance and then they release a signature line of that fragrance. They've done the same thing with Beau de Jure, which is one of the top notch releases of 2020. We're in 2021. This one was released in 2018. And the Baphomet is Sonia Constant. Remember this name. I've recently come across two fragrances which have been done by Sonia Constant and they have been amazing. She also owns a house called Ella K. She's a co-perfumer or co-owner and she's a perfumer for Ella K, which I will feature soon on my channel. But let's talk about Ombre Leather. Ombre Leather is an attempt to create Tuscan Leather type fragrance for the masses. Tuscan Leather has this slight personality. It's uh, less approachable, for want of a better word, for many people, including myself. I did not like Tuscan Leather initially. I currently absolutely love Tuscan Leather. There's a little bit of a transformation that has happened in me, I suppose, and I can't get enough of Tuscan Leather. Yeah, I just adore it. It's one of my most favorite leather fragrances. Same thing happened here. I sprayed uh, about 20 minutes ago because this fragrance needs to settle. So when you first spray, you get a smell which is kind of familiar, but yet very unfamiliar. So there's Tuscan leather like leather. So that leather smells like the leather that would have been used in a brand new upholstered chair, leather chair or a sofa. That's the kind of leather in Tuscan leather. Here, it's slightly different. It smells mixed with a smell of hay. And it really got me. And there's a fresh green cardamom, very faint, overtaken by the leather and the smell of hay. And I couldn't find any hay in the notes breakdown, but I'm smelling hay, greenish hay. But there are a lot of green notes in the base of the fragrance, being oak moss and patchouli. Maybe the, those two are mixing with the leather to create this hay and leather combination. And the most amazing thing is it's very buttery. Yeah, salty buttery. There's no sweetness. There's a fruit note in Tuscan leather, which is raspberry. And Tuscan leather becomes sweeter. But this one is salty. Yeah, almost um, like butter would be. Salted butter. With hay, a little bit of saffron. Again, not mentioned in the notes breakdown. And leather. Yeah, that's how, you, how it starts. And it's beautiful. Very approachable. Almost lovable. Yeah, that's what I think about this fragrance. The opening is smashing. When the fragrance tries, um, starts to dry down, there's a little hint of sweetness and amber starts to come in. And I think that little hint of sweetness is coming from amber. Yeah, so it still is buttery, but more ambery. Yeah, and then in its late dry down, apart from what I mentioned to you, they all stay, all these notes are there, and there's this note of slight indolic jasmine. Yeah? Sometimes, and the full uh, real reason is why I didn't like it at first is when I wore this in summer, the jasmine just overtook everything. And for me, it became a feminine jasmine smell. Now I'm smelling it in winter and that jasmine doesn't overtake. But jasmine adds a little bit of playful, cheerful, unisex attitude to the fragrance, which is just a masterstroke because Tuscan leather is not feminine at all. This one becomes really playful and slightly unisex. Slightly. Very nice fragrance, guys. Please try it if you haven't. So, I'm getting jasmine already. 
it's really nice and, and it's green as well the fragrance has this green aspect because of oak moss patchouli and jasmine and it's slightly soapy there are many aspects to this fragrance i really enjoyed it so many aspects the bit butteriness the greenness amazing so pros and cons number one pro for me is this is one of the most wearable stylish and urbane kind of a leather fragrance leather leather is a difficult fragrance you know in most cases uh, but this one has this slightly playful uh, slightly more approachable very urban very modern kind of leather second upside now second upside is the wearability Le leather fragrances are difficult to pull but this one i will not have any issues going to office wearing this to a date wearing this to a first date to a friends get together nowhere will I struggle. Very, very approachable, very wearable. Number three is the compliment factor. Such fragrances will get you a compliment. Absolutely. No doubts in my mind. Yeah. Fifth, uh, fourth upside, price point. You know, these signature lines, uh, maximum 95 if you look around, you know, 80 to 95. What you get in return is very high quality. So tremendous value for money is the fourth upside. Now the downsides. Number one downside, in my opinion, you can't wear this in summer because it goes very jasmine on me, at least on me. So if you're looking for something which you can wear 12 months in a year, and if you like the smell of jasmine, which goes in the female territory, then yes, you can. For me, it didn't work out. In fact, that's the whole reason I wasn't impressed with this fragrance, okay? so. That's one downside. I can't think of any other down downside. If you're a beginner, you're looking for a nice leather fragrance, which is quite attractive, modern, approachable, you have to really sample this. Expensive if you're a beginner, if you're on a budget, but if you no don't have concerns with budget, start here. Very nice, superb fragrance. So age groups, any age group. I would easily recommend this to a 20 year old or a 60 year old. All right, provided they like modern fragrances. Yeah, so that's the age group done. Seasons, I think cold weather is the best one. In between weather, yeah, spring, no problems. Autumn, no problems. Uh, winter, absolutely fantastic. Sweet spot is winter. This smells amazing. Now, when it's very very cold, yeah. Um, I've covered all aspects, haven't I? Along the, oh yes, perform. performance is could be a downside actually, one of the downsides. Now, longevity, I'm getting about five to six hours, sometimes eight. So it's patchy, depends on how my skin is that day. So longevity is medium. Projection, that's the problem. After half an hour, I'm not getting the kind of projection I would have anticipated this to give me. But that could be my skin as well. Um, Siage, medium low to medium so performance on this fragrance is low to medium yeah it's basically six hours of longevity sometimes eight uh, projection one hour of projection and then close to the skin um siage medium siage even if you go two or three sprays under your shirt i don't get to smell it when i move myself i have to literally poke my nose on inside my shirt which would be quite ungainly if i did that now and i then get to smell it so performance is mediocre on, on me at least. It could be better on your skin, but do test it out. So, marks out of 10. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. The reason I'm removing two marks is that it just is so beautiful, you wanna wear it all the time, you can't. At least I couldn't. And the performance is mediocre for me. Medium, low to medium is a performance. So eight out of 10. I hope you enjoy the review, fellas. Take care, bye-bye.